Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 21st week of weeklypokerhand.com, where today I'm going to be going over another hand from my Bankroll Builder series. I had a few pretty cool hands that happened in the same session, so I figured I would go over those for you, for you guys. Uh, we had the Aces hand last week, and uh, here we have King Jack suited. Not quite Aces, but certainly decent. So I opened to 30 cents in the cutoff with King Jack of Spades, and the Big Blind elects a 3-bet to 95 cents. And you'll see that he does have a pretty high 3-bet percentage, 17.6%, and he seems to be a generally aggressive player. So right here, I don't really mind a call. I think 4-betting would not be very good, because if I 4-bet and he shoves, I pretty much have to fold, and that's not really what I want to happen. Whenever you 4-bet here, you're going to get your opponent to play pretty straightforward against you, and even if he does decide to bluff, you just lose. So, With a hand like King Jack Suited, I think you're much better off taking a flop. Also, for those of you that don't know, Bankroll Builder Series is a series where I started out with $300, and I decided to play $0.05, cent, $0.10, cent, and I am slowly but surely growing my bankroll. And it's been, There's been a lot of variance and tough times, but I am up a decent amount at this point, and things are going well. So... Check that out, if you, especially if you want to start with very little money and learn to grind it up playing small stakes cash games. So we get a pretty good flop, king 7-4, two diamonds, and my opponent pots it. And at these games, when a guy pots it, he usually is either going to show up with something like top pair, top kicker, or better that he wants to protect, which doesn't really make any sense, or he's going to have a stone bluff, which I think makes a little bit more sense. But it's sort of like the absolute base level player that is extraordinarily new to the game just pots it here with, with strong hands. Once a player's been playing a little bit and sort of realizes, um, okay, I don't necessarily need to protect my hands by doing that, they decide to pot with their bluffs. Because now they're trying to bet big to get their opponents off of everything. And... Once you figure out your opponent's tendencies, like say you know a guy and you play with him all the time and you know that he always pots it here as a bluff and he always bets half pot with the nuts, this just becomes an easy call down because you know he ha you have his range crushed. And, you know, by the other token, if you know he only does this with the nuts, you can maybe call once and fold to any additional pressure. So right here I call. I, I don't really think you should ever just fold this to anyone. I think that'd be a little bit absurd. If you're going to fold flops like this, you probably shouldn't be calling the 3-bet in the first spot. So, we call. Turns a six of spades, pretty much a blank, and he checks. And at this point, I think if I bet, he's going to fold all of his air hands. Like, say he has ace-queen or pocket nines. I think if I bet pretty much anything here, he's just going to fold. And that's not what you want to happen. You want your opponent to continue in the hand. Because, you know, he's drawing almost dead. So, I like to check it back here. And the river's a queen, and he checks again. So, at this point... I'm, I'm like 99% sure I have the best hand. The only hand I'm actually concerned that he could have is pocket queens. Um, or maybe pocket sixes. Those are the only hands I think that I lose to here. And I think that those are... Pocket sixes is pretty unlikely, and obviously queens is very unlikely as well, seeing that he three bets 17.6% of hands. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, value bet here. I want to make a small bet because if my opponent does have like ace-jack or pocket nines, he's probably not going to call a very large bet at all. So I think a bet of like... 190 or two dollars would be ideal. So I bet 210, maybe a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit big, but I think it's fine. And in this hand, my opponent snap went all in. Like as soon as that 210 hit, I clicked bet. Within like one second, he was all in. Something now. What in the world is this? Um, if you watch Bankroll Builder series, I pretty much preach that whenever a guy check raises you, they almost always have it, particularly on the river. I mean, river check raise bluffs are few and far between at the small stake games. They do happen occasionally at the larger stakes games, but once you start playing, like for example in, in live poker, if a guy check raises you on the river, unless you have like almost the nuts, you should just fold because the guys just do not check raise bluff the river. Um, right here though, this is this bet just doesn't make any sense. The problem with this is is that if he has ace king, he would have probably just bet the turn. If he had two pair, he probably would have just bet the turn. If he had king-queen, I think he would have bet the river. If he had pocket queens, he may go for a check raise. But, as you see, there are just very few hands that he could possibly have that have me beat. And, I mean, all it really boils down to is he could have exactly pocket queens or maybe king-queen. Those are the only only hands that I can 
even conceive of him having here that have me beat. So, anytime your opponent only has a very tiny range of hands that has you beat, and then there are lots of things that he could have that he's just randomly spazzing out with, I think you should generally find a call. You have to be careful when you make small bets like this on the river, because some players will look at this and view this as, okay, he has a busted draw, he's trying to just pick up the pot. So now I'm going to go all in and try to blow him off of his busted draw, or maybe even thinks I have pocket nines and in value betting, and he thinks he can blow me off of it with a check raise. So right here I do value bet, and as you see, I do elect to call. Now I'm actually going to save the result for you for the next video, where I take a look at my opponent's hand, and we discuss how he played his hand and if I think it was good or bad. So, a uh, pretty cool spot. It's a tough situation where whenever you get check raised on the river because your opponent's range is usually very polarized. And you just have to figure out how often they're bluffing. And like in this spot, say I know he check raises with queens every time and king queen every time, but I don't know how often he's check raising with bluffs. If he's check raises with bluffs, never. Even though king, queen, and king and queens make up such a tiny percent of his range, it doesn't matter because they're 100% of his check raising range, assuming he's never bluffing. But if you know he's bluffing, you know, with a decent amount of hands, then obviously it's a pretty easy call. So, cool spot. Um, I would love to hear what you guys think about this, and if you like seeing hands from the Bankroll Builder series, go check that out, bankrollbuilderseries.com. And uh, if you have any hands you'd like me to review, I mean, I, I'm perfectly fine reviewing small stakes hands, large stake hands, whatever. Just go ahead and send them in. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.